assalamu alaikum today we are going to discuss about the development of limbs in embryology as we know that during the embryological development there are three germ layers that form during the third week of development one of the above layer is ectoderm and the underlying layer is endoderm and in between endoderm and ectoderm there is a mesoderm mesoderm is split into three parts the paraxial mesoderm the intermediate mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm the lateral plate mesoderm is further composed of two layers the somatic layer and splanchnic layer the somatic or parietal layer is one which is responsible for giving rise to limb buds upper limb bud and lower limb bud Let's take a look at the whole process of limb development. First of all, the limb buds appear as the outpokings on the ventrolateral aspect of body wall. The upper limb buds appear at day 24, and after two days, the lower limb buds appear at day 26. So here you can see at the ventrolateral aspect of the body wall, there appear the outpokings like structures. These are called the upper limb and lower limb buds. The next step, as we know that the ectoderm is overlying the mesoderm in all regions, therefore the distal at the distal ends of the limb bud, this ectoderm thickens to form a specific structure. We call it as the apical ectodermal ridge. The cells, mesenchymal cells adjacent to the apical ectodermal ridge, are not allowed to differentiate, and they are proliferating and proliferating. But they don't have time to differentiate, or we can say that the inductive effect of apical ectodermal ridge does not allow these cells to differentiate completely. This proliferating zone, where the cells are undifferentiated, is called the progress zone or PZ. Concept that there are three patterns of limb development, or the limb development is completed in mainly three patterns. One is the proximal distal pattern, the other is the anteroposterior pattern, and the third one is the dorsoventral pattern. Here we are talking about the proximal distal type of pattern in, in which the AER is located distally and the adjacent to the AER is a progress zone whereas in the anteroposterior pattern of development then chymal cells aggregate at the posterior margin of the limb bud in the anteroposterior pattern of development and this region is called the zone of polarizing activity or ZPA this type of pattern is responsible for what as we see that our digits appear in the proper order The dorsoventral pattern is not due to mesoderm, but it is actually by the dorsal and ventral ectoderm. Due to this type of pattern, we are able to distinguish in the ventral and dorsal aspect of hand. For example, our nails appear on the dorsal aspect, so it is important for the distinction between the dorsal and ventral aspects. So now we are done with the patterns of limb development. Back at the proximal distal type of development, in which we have seen that there is AR progress zone and the mesenchymal cells proximally are differentiating. So it, this zone is called the differentiating zone, but the distally present, distally located cells adjacent to the AR remain undifferentiated, and these have the ability to differentiate into any type of structure. The cells proximally located have differentiated into cartilage, as they will form the bone by endochondral ossification. Now, the distal ends of the limb buds flatten to form the hand or foot plates. Here we see, have seen that the hand plates are formed at which day? At day thirty-five. and these then condense to form the digital rays at date 44 and the progress soon has also been shifted towards the distal ends adjacent to the AER now this region have been differentiated into the bony structure or various ossification centers have been appeared there meanwhile the most important step is occurring that is the apoptosis in between the AER or in interdigital regions which is due to the bone morphogenic proteins and the retinoic acid according to our book lines it is here written that intervening regions of mesenchyme soon break down forming notches between the digital rays at day 56 The next step, the bony skeleton of the limb has been formed. Now the whole limb is divided into the three sections. This region of the arm is called stylopod. The forearm is called the zygopod, where the radius and ulna are located. And the, and the most distally located, it is called the otopod. Now, as the limb has achieved its maximum growth or the maximum limit of length, so what is happening to AR that AR located at the distal ends of the hand has start dying off at day 56. So the, we can say that limb development starts at day 24 or 26 and is completed by day 52 to day 56. At the beginning of the fetal period, the synovial joints have been appeared at the ninth week. Now let's look at some clinical or abnormalities in the limb development. First of all, we have the syndactyly. With the syndactyly, we have the webbing of fingers due to the absence of apoptosis that was happening in the interdigital regions. Now next to syndactyly, we have amelia, which is the absence of limb or limbs. Meromelia is not the complete absence of limb or limbs, but if a part of limb is missing, it is called the meromelia. It has two types: hemimelia and focomelia. Hemimelia in which the absence of fibula is there, and focomelia in which the hand or feet is attached closer to the body. Next, we have the split hand syndrome, which is the absence of one or more central digits. The two most common abnormalities. are the polydactyly and brachydactyly brachydactyly is characterized by the shortness in the digits and polydactyly means that there is a there is a presence of some extra digits or digit and it is also called the supernumerary digit so as about the limb development and uh, this was just the basic concept the musculature innervation and the blood supply of limbs is remaining there so hope so in the next video we can make it okay goodbye allah hafiz